Hi, I'm Intruder Green. You might know me from things like The Ritz, Twin Towers Correctional Facility, and Buy Me a Coffee. Welcome to the Intruder Green Podcast. Oh yeah, uh, the date is uh, 30th of June, 2020. Uh, we're right at the end of uh, Pride Month. Sorry, I forgot to mention that earlier this month, eh, but I got it in there just now. Because even though this comes out on the 1st, we're recording on the 30th. And I hope uh, all my LGBTQ friends out there had a good one. Um, and, uh, you know, I think, uh, you know, with everything going on, uh, the, the important thing to remember is, uh, you know, Pride, uh, Pride Month it started with a riot, with the Stonewall riots. And, uh, you know, you can read up on the history there, on the Wikipedias or whatever. And, uh, yeah, get to know, uh, what that's all about, um, because, you know, obviously there's been some riot rioting and happening lately, uh, for similar, uh, you know, causes or whatnot, and, uh, you know, it's like, eh, you know, this shit never ends, you gotta, you gotta keep, uh, keep moving, I mean, it should, it should, it should end eventually, that would be nice, but, you know, there's always power to fight against, and you gotta keep doing it, uh, because, People want to be free and free of not only laws, but uh, persecution and whatnot. All right. Um, I got to say, too, uh, I just found out about the death of Kyle Reiner. And, uh, you know, like he's uh, it's weird talking about celebrity deaths because like lots of times it's like, well, there's so many of them. And it's like, yeah, they live pretty cool lives. So it's like when they do die, it's like, eh, whatever. But at the same time, like, sometimes they're real cool, and you're like, oh, shit, uh, that's a bummer, because maybe they were young, you know, like, doing cool stuff, and, uh, making some cool stuff that you enjoyed a lot, and then they die, and then you're like, well, well that sucks. Um, that didn't really happen to Kyle Reiner, he was pretty fucking old. So, I guess it was just his time to go, but, uh, you know, for me, uh, especially, it, it's, it's especially uh, weird when a comedian dies, and he was one of the good ones, he's a classic dude, he, like I said, I, I don't have the info in front of me, I don't know how old he was, but he was pretty old, um, I think most people my age or younger, uh, kind of only know him as, like, that one old guy in lot, that just pops up in movies, uh, seemingly randomly or whatever, but, uh, you know, he always did a great job, he was in A Jerk, uh, with Steve Martin, and that was a great movie, um, lots of other stuff, so, uh, you know, maybe, uh, go, go check out one of his movies tonight, or whatever, after you listen to this podcast, and, uh, maybe a few more episodes of this podcast, all right, uh, yeah, so anyway, uh, just wanted to say R.I.P. Kyle Reiner, because, uh, he was a real funny guy, and I think he probably had a pretty cool life, uh, you know, and, and I guess the thing I wanted to, the point I wanted to make about, like, comedians dying, it's like, I don't know, it, it literally makes the world a slightly less happy place, because, like, they dedicate their lives to, uh, making people laugh and smile and stuff, and, uh, so, yeah, I know, I know there's been lots of celebrity deaths that I ain't picked up on or mentioned on the show, um, not sure why this one spe specifically hit me, um, but, uh, you know, maybe it's something to do more often, because, uh, you know, you want to pay tribute to the good people in the world, uh, especially when, all this fucking terrible shit is going on. Uh, yeah. All right. I uh, want to give a shout out to the producers of the podcast. We got Luke Ellis, Hedda Royston, Gem City, Sabrina, Vaughn Cotton, Sarah Koenig, Chelsea McNally, Cardboard Box Colony, and Carlos Hernandez. Uh, they're part of a special little group that keeps this show going. I would love to uh, get more people as part of that group and make it a nice big one. Um, and that would allow me to do more stuff. I know, uh, you know, I'd love to do more cooking shows on the Instagrams and the YouTubes and uh, stuff like that. I've even got some other bigger plans, uh, pro possibly in the works. But, you know, uh, it all takes money. And, uh, you know, if it, the, better, the, the more money I get, the better I could do at this stuff. I promise you guys. Uh, so anyway, uh, if you want to do that, uh, get on patreon.com slash green. You can sign up for like as little as a dollar or as much as like, Probably like a million dollars or something like that. Oh, yeah, that'd be cool. All right. But anyway, uh, love you guys. Thanks so much for helping out. And uh, yeah, on this show, we got uh, a buddy of ours named James Balsamo. And uh, we met up with him uh, kind of just, uh, well, not randomly, but he hit us up when we were playing a show a while back now uh, in uh, 
L.A. And I can't fucking remember the name of the club we played at. Uh, because I wanted to mention it, but it was a really great show. We played with the fucking Bomb Pops. And, uh, yeah, it was lots of fun. I don't know. <laughs> if anybody remembers that show, uh, it, it got, he filmed it and everything. And, uh, anyway, he is a, uh, I don't know, an independent filmmaker. And, uh, he used to work for Troma. We talk about this stuff in the interview, so I won't talk about it too much here. But, uh, the one cool thing I will say that I didn't know until we did the interview is that he played the Toxic Avenger. Uh, a few times and that's pretty fucking cool you know like uh as far as trauma you know those movies go toxic avenger was probably the biggest thing so uh that's kind of how he got his start working for trauma and uh if you see any of his movies um you know they're a lot like that trauma style just like crazy over the top lots of boobs and butts and like blood and stuff like just like whatever whatever fucking uh you know, a 15-year-old kid wants to see, that's going to be there. So, uh, you know, check it out. Uh, Acid Bath Productions, I th- believe is the name of his uh, studio. You can get on his website and stuff. Um, yeah, uh, he did. He put us in a movie uh, when we were playing that show. Uh, just kind of like an extra part. And uh, it's fun to watch. Uh, yeah, I think we did a pretty good job. We should probably be in another movie. Uh, if you guys know anybody working in Hollywood or they want to make a cartoon show out of us, please uh, give me a call. You can get on the Intruder Green uh, call in line. That's plus one six zero eight five three five nine six zero eight, And, uh, you know, drop Intruder Green a line. And, you know, you can always email the band too or whatever. All right. Uh, anyway, uh, yeah, it's gonna. it was a real nice uh, catching up with him. Uh, this interview went like way back um i kind of switched it up in the uh rotation as far as uh how things go so this was like i think uh, pretty early on with the pandemic uh things going on um but you know yeah this was when i first started noticing my internet was cutting out because of the bandwidth problems and whatnot i think that's the deal i don't know uh well hopefully things will be well, if, hopefully the internet will be back to normal. Like I said before, I don't think anything should go back to normal as in the normal that we knew before. We got to create a new normal where like uh, Black Black Lives Matter and uh, people <laughs> can get over this fucking pandemic. Jesus Christ. I wish, you know, I would love to go back to America one of these days and uh, see the other intruders and like our other buds back there. But... Uh, you guys are making it real fucking hard, uh, because of, uh, the way everybody's handling the pandemic over there. And I know that's not necessarily people who listen to this podcast. I know you guys all wear your fucking masks in public and everything and, uh, real good with the social distancing and whatnot. You're not trying to spread this thing and you're trying to, you know, get rid of it as quickly as possible so we can all start going to shows and stuff again someday. Uh, but you know. A lot of other people are not doing that, uh, and uh, it sucks because you know I I didn't come over here to like never see my best friends again, uh, <laughs> and at this point it could be years, you know, like literally. So that's kind of fucked up. I'm um, sorry to bring up that uh, downer thing that uh, happens when you talk sometimes, but that's just what just happened. Anyway, the interview is a lot more fun than what I just said. <laughs> So I'll get to it. Uh, without further ado, I'm with the show. Hello, this is a prepaid collect call from Intruder Green, an inmate at the Neural Correctional Institution. This call is subject to recording and monitoring. To accept charges, press one. Ladies and gentlemen, James Balsamo on the Intruder Green Podcast. Hold on. How you doing, man? 
It's uh Hey everybody, Jay Balsamo here, super excited to be on uh <laughs> the show. Hell yeah. With rock and roll. Excited yes. to have you on, um, because unlike a lot of people, you know, it's like I've been I've been doing a lot of these fucking podcasts where I have just band dudes on. And uh, you know, one reason I don't want to keep doing that is because uh I feel like that podcast already exists like five times over. And uh, you know, it's just exciting to have somebody on who's like I, I I believe you play music. I, I I read your like the bio or whatever on the internet. Um, but your main thing is making movies, right? That's right. I make the movies, the moving pictures. Hell yeah! And we even got to be in one of your movies, which I'm ex- especially excited about. Um, I honestly still haven't been able to watch the whole thing, but I did check out our scene, and I <laughs> I think it turned out great. And I'm really excited to watch the whole thing when I get a chance. Yeah, you guys are great in it. Uh, you guys play uh, the baby-faced fe- Nelson's uh, bank-robbing band. Yeah, that's right. And uh, there's some live footage in there, which I was stoked on. Um, yeah, I, it, I think the whole movie looks pretty good. I saw some other like little parts and stuff. So, uh, you know, I, I know a little bit, but like, uh, what exactly, how did you get into like making movies? You've been doing it for a while and like, you live, you, you, you're you making like independent movies in LA. That's right. Yeah. So I started out acting and, uh, I've been acting since I was eight. I mean, like I said, Hey, these <laughs> movies are terrible. I could do this. Right. <laughs> Moving past that. I got my start, uh, working for Troma, the long, the longest running independent film company, you know, oh, they did yeah. the toxic Avenger and uh class of newcomb high of course and i actually played the toxic avenger in uh six dvd what? trauma intros that's amazing yeah, so whenever, yeah whenever you see furry italian armed toxie that's how you know it's james balsamo i had no fucking idea that's fucking amazing um yeah i was gonna say like just from uh the the little bits of your movies that i've seen so far it does definitely have a trauma f- look and uh feel to it so i was uh you know uh, that makes a whole lot of sense how so? How exactly did that work out? How do you end up? Because uh, you, you you just you just started acting for trauma. There's this trash for about a year. Yeah. <laughs> and then I said, uh, "What the hell am I doing? I could make a movie. Why am I taking out garbage when I could be making it?" Oh yeah. And so I picked up a camera and I went to film school and then I made my first movie, Hack Job, and that had Guar in it. Oh and, yeah. Uh, Lloyd Kaufman and Debbie Rashan and Lynn Lowry from the Crazies. And I Drink Your Blood was in it. And uh, that got picked up for worldwide distribution. And it was all over cable. So you're, uh, you, you got into the trauma. And that was, was that like, I don't know, how did you get there even? You know, you know what? Uh, trauma has an amazing turnover rate. Because oh, yeah. uh, people don't like to work for free. And oh, yeah. get trauma movies as payment. Except for me. So uh, I was there for almost a whole year. But uh, I was working at a comic book store, and we were selling a used copy of The Toxic Avenger Part 2. Oh, wow. And somebody came in, and they were like, hey, you know, Troma's, you know, uh, in the city, and they uh, they hire anybody. You can just call them and work for a film company. It's like, oh, shit. So I did. And literally that following weekend, I, like, quit my comic book job to work at Troma. That's amazing. That's, like, a true hollywood dream come true it sounds to me anyway i mean working at a comic right. book store is pretty fucking cool to begin with but then uh you know going from comic books to movies and like i don't know that's amazing i love it yeah yeah and uh, full circle after making uh 18 feature films i actually owned a comic book store holy I shit just sold it yeah yeah so i had a la comic book store called zappers there's still an Instagram. You guys could follow it. We do toy conventions now, but uh, we had an actual store for a few months, and then I sold it to the guy that draws Roger on American Dad. Oh wow! <laughs> Bill, <laughs> Bill Bill Buchanan, who's actually in Catch of the Day two, the same movie that you guys are in. Oh yeah, he's uh he's one of the mafia guys in the opening funeral parlor scene. Oh yeah, so. that's a great scene. <laughs> it's like the main scene of the movie, really. Yeah. It's where it's where it all begins. Um, it's true. <laughs> yeah. Um, so yeah. So you're doing like the independent movies, kind of like trauma style. 
if anybody listening is like into that sort of thing, I definitely recommend checking uh, your stuff out because it's fucking great. Uh, Thanks, man. Oh Appreciate yeah. That. Oh yeah. Um, so, but uh, let's see. So like, uh, you know, there's obviously you know you, you're doing good uh, making these movies, but you said like with trauma, you know, like people don't like working for free and stuff. So how does that work? Like you. you I'm just trying to figure out how the whole like independent film scene works. Like, where would you on your end? Like, you know, people say it's an independent movie when they show these things at like the Cannes Cannes Film Festival, whatever. But that's not like the same thing. This is like on a whole. This is like a whole like a genre, really, right? Like, yeah, it's 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 like. You know, it's like a buddy cop movie that, that that this one specifically is, but you always seem to work in horror elements in there, and uh, which is cool. But uh, you know, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't yeah, know. We got the gory, goopy stuff in there, and the gratuitous nudity. Yeah, you know, it's right. it's exploitation at its finest. So, yeah, uh, but it's I, like I not love, exploiting anything specific and, and gore. Yeah. So I always try to end celebrity cameos like yourself. Oh yeah. So and then. Uh, Hall of Fame, WWE Hall of Famer, Bushwhacker Luke is in there. Hall of Famer, Jake the Snake's in there. The Amazing mm. Kreskin's in the movie. You know, so it's all these. Uh, John Amplis from Creepshow, he plays the uh, zombie father that wants his cake. He's yeah. in Catch of the Day, too. So, you know, it's all those kind of elements. Absolutely. And so, but, you know, you're able to keep it afloat. So, I mean, I got, you know, a buddy or well, actually, he's in a movie. I wrote he, Dave, Dave Nobody. Well, he went he went full on Dave Whiffler in the film, which I think his scene was also great. I'm so glad he got a line in there, um, because he yeah. gets to call Officer Bradford a loser, which we all want to do that. All right, <laughs> um, but yeah, like he he uh, I think he was especially stoked for that because he likes to collect. Uh, you know, he's got like a whole Instagram thing, and he he basically like uh collects vhs tapes of like old like 80s horror and stuff like that and action yeah. movies from that uh-huh. time you know so uh yeah obviously there's like a market for uh this sort of thing um how did yeah how- casualty 2 will be on vhs oh, i've really? released uh, all of my films on vhs yeah because there is that big nostalgia market and i mean that's how i grew up renting those horror vhs and exploitation vhs from blockbuster hollywood video the mom and pop shops you know? absolutely so. I, I so did i you know like uh you know vhs it's definitely there's definitely certain movies that like i like honestly most of the time i want to see things digitally because i'm like i can watch on my computer and stuff like that it's easier or whatnot but there's certain movies and i feel like anything like your style the trauma style is like it's made for VHS. Like, I don't know. Mm-hmm. Maybe like when when the tape wears out a little bit and it gets a little swiggly, it's like, yeah, I almost kind of want a little bit of that when I'm watching it. It almost adds to like the, especially if it's like a horror movie because it's like, oh shit, I shouldn't be watching it, and then the tape fucking gets fucked up, and you're like, oh shit, it's like <laughs> God's telling me that I shouldn't be watching this now. Oh. Right. But that it makes it feel naughty. Yeah, it's good stuff. Yeah. Oh, it's naughty. <laughs> <laughs> Video nasties, as they call it in uh, Europe. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Probably. <laughs> I don't know. I'm in Europe right now, but I don't know. Uh, I I haven't met a whole lot of people that are into this stuff. But I know Dave. Uh, I wrote he again. He he gets a lot of stuff because he like buys shit on the internet and stuff uh, for like VHS tapes, and he has it sent to me so that he can come right. get it later. <laughs> and there was a while I had like too much of it, and I was like, "Dude, yeah, I know we're going on tour in Europe soon, but uh, you gotta fucking come get this shit, get it out of my place." Right. <laughs> right. Yeah. But it's good stuff. Did you watch any of it? Was it good? Did you see anything? Uh... See, that the thing is, I don't want to like because it's all. I, some of it was like wrapped up, and I don't want to like fuck oh, with his okay. shit. You know, like he's. He's pretty particular about that. One time I was playing a record at his place and I like 
handled it funny. I didn't drop it or nothing, but he all he was already like all over me, like, dude, what are you doing? And I'm like, all right, right, well, you fucking flip it then. The record was over, and I was just trying to keep the tunes going so that like the party could keep happening, and right. nobody else was, you know, fucking yeah. you no spend, good deed left You spend one unpunished. record on your dick, and you get a hard time for life. But that's right. I was just trying to yeah. be a little fancy and uh, yeah. being like, look at me, I'm crazy, whoa. You know, that's how you keep the party <laughs> yeah, rolling. I get it. Yeah. I've been there. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, but as far as like making these types of movies, like, do you do you just see yourself doing this forever, or are you trying to like make the next Marvel movie or what? Uh, you know what? It's it's weird because I have the same distributor uh, as a Fox and Sony Holy Pictures. Shit. So like all my stuff goes straight to Walmart, Best Buy, Barnes and Noble. So whatever I make is you know in the mainstream, and I have total control. That's what's nice about being the CEO of an independent company. Oh, yeah. So whatever I want to make still goes out to a mainstream market. So I'm I'm in a real sweet spot. So I'm I'm kind of riding the wave for now. But uh, you know I've I've been uh, producing other stuff and. Like I produced Hanukkah, the first Jewish slasher film, oh, nice. and that was uh, Sid ha- Sid Haig's last movie and Dick Miller's last film. And it's got Charles Fleischer who did the voice of Roger Rabbit. Oh, so, that's great! Yeah, that just came out in stores uh, last month, and uh, check it out. It's pretty it's pretty brutal. Hanukkah, <laughs> and I act in it also. Nice. So, and I was the director of photography for that film. So you know, I I do a whole <laughs> bunch of other stuff with friends, and you know, I I love film. I just love music and i love film and and i i released uh like you said i do play a little music i released my first musical dvd uh earlier in the year james balsamo knows how to rock it's a compilation of bands that i was in over the years you oh know? nice so, and it's a dvd yeah. so is it like all videos and stuff yeah it's a dvd of music videos that uh tight. of bands that i was in tight um yeah. Well, that's very nice. It seems like uh, doing what you're doing as far as film goes is almost like being on a punk rock label uh, playing music because it's like, yeah, you know, like even uh, like uh, the first one we were on was Red Scare Industries and they Mm -hmm. were based out of Chicago. And it's like there was definitely like a jump when we went to Fat Records because they got like uh, like I think they are distributed by Universal as well. Um, mm-hmm. you know, any, I think it, it seems like you get to a certain point and then it's, it's, it's all universal. And then like, I don't know, Red Scare probably could be, uh, doing, punching up that high, but like Toby's like trying to keep it real or some shit. I don't know, mm-hmm. but you know, it's, it's all good. And, uh, it's, it's great that, you know, you could keep doing that sort of thing. Yeah. I love it. I mean, so I'm just cranking out movie after movie. So, yeah. you know. And I'm making whatever I want. If I want to make a buddy cop movie, I do it. You know, I'm the boss. So I like want to do a teen booby comedy. Let's yeah. do it. <laughs> and it, and you're in L.A. So that's like the yep. place to do all that stuff. I got to say, like oh, yeah. people, people, you know, people talk a fair amount of shit about uh, living in L.A. and stuff. And I'm like, well, I don't know if I could live there, but it's definitely fun to visit. And we've definitely had some great times there. And it seems like it's always sunny and beautiful. Right now, every I'm, day, yeah. it's like Groundhog's Day. I know. <laughs> it seems like we're, we're, we're like we're, we're there, and like right now, where I am, it's like my sinuses are going crazy, and I'm like, man, if I was in <laughs> South, Southern California, bet this wouldn't be happening, um, right here. But uh, you know, you gotta do what you gotta do, and uh, so nope. how does uh, you know, everybody being on lockdown affect you know this release and everything? Because, like, I know as a band, when we release something, it's like it's time to go on tour and promote the record and make as much money as we can. But that's not happening now. So, you know, right. but then the give and take is like everybody's inside and they got nothing better to do but watch movies. Yeah. So, you know, the digital market is great. And that's where, you know, I do a lot of my sales. But I'm, I really love to tour myself. I do, like, a lot of horror conventions. And I've been doing that for about eight years. Oh, yeah. So... You know, um, the last show I did was with uh, Freddy Krueger and Nev Campbell. It was Mad Monster Party in Arizona about a month before the whole outbreak happened. Oh, yeah. So, yeah. So now know. you're on lockdown and you're just uh, hanging in there, huh? 
You can't even. Yeah, I mean, I, are you going to like do about two shows a month around the oh, country? Damn. So, yeah, yeah. So <laughs> my whole tour schedule's all messed up. So I'm just editing. Oh yeah, to... tell me about it. Yeah. Yeah. So like, maybe it's time to like do some weird artsy shit where you're just like making a whole movie by yourself in your home. I would. Yeah, a lot it. of filmmakers have been doing that too. That's oh, yeah. like the new wave. So the next year it's gonna have a lot of home videos. <laughs> let's say that. <laughs> oh man, yeah, and and like the bands are doing these live streams and everything. Everybody's doing live streams, and I'm like, yeah, it's cool, but I feel like it's gonna get old quick. But who knows? Maybe yeah. it'll be cool forever. See, people seem right. to like it. I did a I did a Intruder Greens cocktail hour the other day, and I just basically oh. went on Instagram and drank cocktails with people. Except, <laughs> like I said, I'm like nine hours ahead of you so when i'm doing it right. everybody else is like it's Sleeping. it's noon <laughs> you know and i'm like well you know like whatever it's saturday and you ain't got shit to do so fucking party oh yeah <laughs> that's a party yeah. all day every day that's how i like to live my life yeah i mean yeah you're in la you should you, you you're that's a right. movie maker in la <laughs> what else would you do right exactly <laughs> Enjoy the bikini babes and uh, a bottle of beer. That's what I say. Yeah, why not? You know, um, yeah, California ladies, it's it's wonderful. Um, so I gotta I gotta ask you a, a question. Well, actually, yeah. no. Before I get into that, uh, like, what is next? Like, do you have any plans as far as like releasing anything or doing anything specific? Yeah, so uh, I've got a new movie, monster movie coming out with starring Eric Roberts, Julia Roberts' brother, oh, wow. and uh, Ola Ray, the girl from the Thriller music video, and uh, Troy wow. Froman's in it. He was uh, the bully on Saved by the Bell. Nice. And uh, it's called It Wants Blood, and oh, it's yeah. about uh, an African legend monster that this politician captures to uh, use its powers to win uh, re-election. Oh, to, to wait. The, the monster is trying to win re-election? <laughs> yeah, the political monster, Eric Roberts. Oh, shit, this is like this. a whole satire and commentary about uh, the, I don't know, some kind of uh, complex that we have in politics, right? You got it. You oh, nailed it. That's so. right. <laughs> I love it. Nothing gets past you, Green. That's right. It's it's the time for it too, because uh, you know shit's crazy the with politics it. these days. Uh, so yeah, yep. that's good. It's timely, and uh, you know, like you should probably get like propaganda to make an appearance in it. Except it's probably already done. So whatever. Um, yeah. I'm sure they'll, I'm sure they'll be stoked. And <laughs> yeah, but yeah, I definitely seen some. I think uh, like maybe I seen on your. Uh, social medias or whatever like some pictures of that and stuff um so but that was a while ago like how long do you does it normally take to make uh one of your film uh it usually takes about three months oh, so yeah. it wants blood was shot in six days in entirety and then uh caleb emerson who's the editor for tosh.0 is cutting the film and so it's uh it's done we've just been waiting for the whole virus thing to die down so we could take it on tour and stuff like that so six days to shoot though that's amazing that's fucking yeah well i've been making movies for about 15 years so i got a formula down you know (laughs) (laughs) oh sure yeah all right (laughs) guitar players i bet you thought you were shit out of luck when it comes to finding your dream guitar amp you know you go on some auction site or something and it's all crap (laughs) yeah well that's because you know, you gotta look in the right place. And the right place is Yeah Man's Vintage and Used Guitars. They got exactly what you're looking for. Now I know what you're thinking. Aren't they located in like Switzerland or something? Yeah man, they are. Burn Switzerland to be exact. But you know, you can uh, get on the internet and you can go check out the website yeahmansguitars.com and uh, you can order stuff on there. So, uh, you know, it don't really matter where the heck you are in the world. You can just get on their website and uh, find all sorts of cool stuff that you're looking for. And you might not even know that you wanted it until you see it on there. And there's a lot of good stuff. Uh, if you got something specific you're looking for and need some help finding it, just hit up Yeah Man Guitars on the electronic mail. That's the email. It's like 21st century and you got email and websites. It's like amazing. Some people would call it magic. Some people call it science. I just call it, I don't know, crazy shit. 
Uh, guitar is at gmail.com. As far as email goes, it's where you email them. And while you're at it, get your band a tour in Europe and stop out of shop. Michael and the rest of the crew would love to meet you, I'm sure. And you could tell them Green sent you. Yeah, man's vintage and used guitars. Hi, Intruder Maniacs. Are you in a band? The answer is, of course you are. Everybody's in a fucking band these days. Anyway, if you're in a band, congratulations. I'm making the worst financial decision of your life. Aside from taking out college loans or something. Yeah. Now, there is a way to lessen a burden of such a financial decision. It's called merchandising. And Stupid Rap Merch Company is all ready to meet your merchandising needs. You want uh, some t-shirts? Uh, you want got a tight deadline you need them printed on? And because you booked a tour less than a month out and uh, you didn't get canceled like everybody else's tours did? Uh, how about a bunch of weird random trinkets like keychains or medallions and what about koozies? You know, like everybody likes koozies. Koozies are great because they keep your drink cold and your hand warm or vice versa depending on what you're drinking. Stupid Red Merch Company can get all these made for you. Stupid Red Merch Company is an in-house artist who can help you with your designs and stuff. They're still a small enough company that uh, they pay special attention to you and your special needs because, you know, everybody's got special needs. Like, uh, you know, you probably mostly. And uh, they even got a web store. That's where the real magic is. You go on tour and you sell your stuff. But chances are you're going to have some leftover. Or some fans are going to feel like left out because they didn't have enough money to buy something at your show. So they go on a stuporedmerch.com and find stuff from your band on there. They'll take care of all your production and shipping fulfillment needs. So go ahead. Go on a Stupid Red Merch Company web store. Right now, and uh, check out all the tight bands that are already on there. They got a bunch of them, like got uh, the Bomb Pops and like the Bad Cop, Bad Cop and stuff. It's all good. Uh, yeah, uh, all sorts of cool swag. And uh, right now, right now, if you go on there and you, at checkout you use the code Prison, you can get fifteen percent off all of the uh, Stupid Red merch branded apparel uh, at StupidRedMerch.com. Go check it out. Um, that's great. Uh, yeah. And I think, you know, I, I've read some. You want to know the budget. formula? Yeah, the I do want to know hey the you, formula. Take your top off. Hey, you <laughs> throw that blood on her. Okay. Did we get it? All right. Moving on. <laughs> so you're giving the people what they want, you know? And some mm -hmm. people are afraid to ask for that, but you just put it out there and people are like, yeah, that's, that guy gets me. He knows what's up. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. exactly. <laughs> that's right. I mean, that's the thing, too, about, like, horror movies, because, like, I'm not a huge horror buff, but I definitely have some, like, favorites and, like, some stuff that I've seen that was, like, I like more than other things. And a lot of this new uh -huh. stuff, it's, like, you know, they, they got the, like, uh, what's that movie? Like, the Get Out, and they're, like, oh, now we got, like, smart horror movies. And I'm, like, yeah, that's cool. Uh -huh. um, but then oh, some of these other ones that I'll just, like, you know how I mean, you know better than me do, better than me do, better than I do probably <laughs> <laughs> about yeah. how like you know when you get uh some big hit movie, it's like suddenly uh there's like twenty more that come out the, in the next couple of years that are like trying to oh, rip yeah. it off. Well, you know that's why I started doing sequels. For oh, me, yeah. it was the year of the sequel. I did uh, Cool as Hell too. To, which was a follow-up to my film Cool as Hell, which had Tom Savini in it. You know, he did the oh, yeah. makeup for Friday the 13th, and, you know, his credits go on and on. And Speaking David of... Naughton from American Werewolf in London's in that. And then I did the sequel with Michael Berryman from The Hills Have Eyes and Phil Ansamo from Pantera. Oh, so, yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, we... Cool. Um, speaking of horror, that was a very scary sound in the background just now. But uh, anyway, yeah, I think it's... The the thing I was trying to get to was like all this fucking uh movies with the CGI uh mm -hmm. trying to scare me and I, I don't know man it's like I see some of these big like action movies like like I said earlier like I I like the Marvel movies cuz they're like they're great for what they are and they really you know they got like super high end CGI I like science fiction stuff and it's cool but mm -hmm. a lot of these horror movies that use so much CGI, it's like, I don't know. That shit doesn't scare me as much as like, like, uh, the, 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 what do you call it? Like natural effects or whatever that yeah, you seem to use practical, like, practical effects. That's, effects. that's yeah. what I always use. Yeah. I mean, I, I always say a rubber head is going to look like a rubber head for, you know, a hundred years. 
like CGI, the problem is the technology is always growing. Yeah, so that's right. If you have something that looks cool today, in 10 years, it's going to look shitty. I yeah. Mean, and so. it's weird because it's like, yeah, it's like you said, when, when you see a rubber head getting chopped off or like covered in blood or something, you're kind of like, well, I know that's a rubber head because it looks like a rubber head, but I don't know. The fact that it's like a real tangible object just makes it right. kind of like gross, <laughs> you know? And uh, yeah, right. I think uh, everybody appreciates that, whether they realize it or not. So, uh, it's true. yeah, I think, uh, you know, it's a wonderful thing. And people should use more practical effects. Um, you know, and I think Hollywood kind of came to their senses on that a little bit. Um, although, you know, there's plenty of people still cranking out the, like, over CGI. Fuck, got a moth in here. Um, you right. know, movies and everything. But, like, it seemed like they were just going nuts with it, like, maybe 10 years ago. And it was especially, right. like, back then, like, the technology was just kind of, like, not ready for some of the shit they were trying to pull off. Right. And now it's just, like... Yeah, you know, you mix it up a little bit, use some practical effects, and it's much better. Yeah. It's true. Yeah, I always vote for the rubber head. <laughs> That's good stuff. So what are you doing today? What's the what's the day in the life of James Balsamo like? Are you cracking a beer? I thought I heard you doing some stuff there. Yeah, I cracked a beer. That's a good time. You know, yeah. Yep, smoke them if you got them. Drink them if you got them. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, I hope we can come and uh, make more movies with you. I feel like, uh, you know, people have been trying to pitch us on doing a Mass Intruder movie one of these days. It ain't going to happen this year, but you might be the guy to hit up about that. Um, All you right. Might yeah, know, let's do you it. You might know somebody or you might be somebody that we should talk to about it. Um, I, I do got to ask you, uh, unless there's something else you want to get into about uh crime stories do you uh -huh. do you got any uh real crime stories or? well it's up to you <laughs> bud you know like this is a special segment of the show that i've been doing for a little while now and i'm I'm still trying to figure out exactly how to bring it up with people because like sometimes people are like oh i don't know if i want to talk about that and i'm like yeah that's right that's why i asked but uh yeah it's kind of like you there did i lose you yo yeah oh, yeah I I, is it a crime that I've committed? An, an incrimination? <laughs> <laughs> like I said, it's up to you, bud. You can talk about a friend who did some fucked up shit. You can talk about a time that you actually went to jail. You could talk about some time you got away with some shit. And this might like go down as evidence against you, but that's totally up to you. <laughs> I'm trying to uh, you know, do a thing where we, we actually tie the podcast into what Mass Intruder is a little bit. Because mostly it's just me, oh, yeah. you know fucking flapping my gums and trying to get other people to do it along with me but you know it you got it's nice to have a little bit of context i guess sure yeah so uh a crime that i committed mm -hmm. one time uh, for fun by accident was uh there was a camera store in new york that had a back alley that was next to a dumpster but sometimes they would work on equipment that wasn't garbage it was just near a dumpster so oh, yeah. i uh i walked away with a beautiful tripod which i oh, thought nice. was garbage which turned out not to be garbage <laughs> oh so accidental crime i do that a yeah, lot said, oops yeah i i this fell into my hands and it's in my car now by accident yeah, absolutely and it's that's the thing yeah. that's the best alibi is saying you know i think uh dave Chappelle had that joke well, it was for a different reason, but he's like, sorry, officer, I didn't know I couldn't do that. And it's like, yeah, just uh, <laughs> fucking complete ignorance. Yeah. Like, uh, you know, like, hey, oh, yeah. I didn't know this wasn't garbage. It was next to the dumpster. <laughs> Fuck, you know, right. like, and then they're like, sorry, it was across the street. And, uh, and you're like, well, that's still like pretty close to the dumpster. Close but enough. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, close enough to the dumpster. <laughs> There's also another dumpster over there, probably. Right. Anyway, it was a nice tripod. It held up a whole uh, jib crane, which is like a 60-pound arm that, you know, lifts the camera like 10 feet yeah. in the air. So it worked out nice for me anyway. Yeah. So when it comes to, like, all this technology and everything, that, that kind of sort of thing is totally overwhelming to me because I'm like, 
you know, I thought about like I can make a movie, and maybe I could, but yeah. it's also kind of like all the things like my buddy Matthew, who who was like the he uh he's he, he's kind of helping me out with his podcast and some other things. He he was on tour with Mass Intruder when we were in Europe, and uh, uh-huh. you know he did uh videography and stuff for us, and uh, you know he was like, oh yeah, you should get Adobe, you know whatever their video editing software is. And I was like, okay, cool. So I was checking it out, and I was like, I got no fucking idea what I'm doing here. I was just like lost in this sea, and I was like, I'm just going <laughs> to drown now. It's fine. And uh, so like, <laughs> yeah. I mean, obviously, you've had a lot of time to build experience with this stuff, but like, uh, I don't know. Do you got any advice for somebody who's just trying to like figure it out from the beginning? Yeah, I always say, uh, you know, just pick up a camera. Now you can shoot a whole movie on your phone. That's true. Just start shooting, and there's lots of tutorial videos. But my advice is always just to jump in head first. I mean, that's how I started. I was, you know, I uh, I basically just handed people the camera and was like, okay, you press the record button, and I'll yeah. figure it out later. And I'm yeah, still doing that idea. to this day. Yeah, that's right. And you, <laughs> <laughs> that's good stuff. Um, yeah, I started making some videos of my own actually with uh, like a cooking show and. And, you know, just like stuff for the social medias, um, just because yeah. I figured, you know, people are like, oh, you can make a lot of money on social media and be an influencer. And I'm like, cool, right. I want to influence people and make a lot of money. I'll do that. Um, so, right. so far, not so good. But, you know, like, uh, whatever. It's still fun to do. And I think that's the main thing. You got to have fun doing it. Otherwise, like, uh, you it's know, all about that. You could probably you could probably do something else and. I could definitely do other things and make a lot more money than I do right now, and it would be <laughs> not fun. So if I'm not doing having fun, might might as well do that. But yeah, exactly. Yeah, but if that's it ain't a, fun, fuck it. Exactly. And then fuck it till it's fun. That's what I say. <laughs> that's a good saying. Um, <laughs> but that's also a very l- good like uh, uh, like DIY punk rock kind of way to do things. I think that. Uh, people, I'm, I'm glad to hear people embrace, um, I don't know. I know you knew about us, but are you like into punk rock or was, were we like just a like random thing that you decided to like check out? No. Yeah. I, I am into punk rock. I've had, uh, the meat men, uh, in a few of my oh, films yeah. and you know, Tesco V himself. Nice. So yeah, I'm a, I'm a punk rock fan and uh, I've had a few bands on Fat Records and some of my other films, and uh, Teenage Bottle Rocket was oh, in really? Ice Player Guts. Nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, oh, I'm going to go watch that one know. next. Yeah. yeah, that's a fun slasher film. Hell yeah. I'm sure they all are. I'm I'm stoked to like start getting into this stuff more. Um, yeah, because you know the Netflix and the and the Disney Plus is kind of like, over. I'm 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 done. <laughs> I mean, I'm not done. <laughs> I like big blockbuster movies too, but it's like, right. I need a break from that shit. Yeah, that's when they come to me. When you're done with mainstream <laughs> shit, come on to Acid Bath Productions. Hell yeah. Com. <laughs> and where can, so, so you got like a website people can find all your stuff at and order DVDs or like stream stuff? Yeah, yeah. Acidbathproductions.com. We've got t shirts, action figures, hot sauces. I wrote uh, two joke books. They sell in Barnes and Noble, but you can get them through my site. So, excellent. Um, well, actually, one other thing I wanted to ask you about, I heard you're from, originally from New York, and you made your way yep. over to, uh, LA via just making movies. So did you start in New it's York true. as a young, I did start young lad? Yeah, yeah, it's true. As a young lad, that's where I started working for Troma. So. Wow. In New York as a young lad. Yep. That's crazy. And then I know. And then, uh, here I am in Holly weird. Yeah. It's very weird. And I love it. <laughs> well, excellent. Um, yeah, I don't know if there's anything else you wanted to get into, but I think we did a good job here. Yeah, we nailed it. <laughs> yeah, High that's five right. for us. <laughs> <laughs> Hell yeah. <laughs> well, I would love to give you a high five next time we're in LA and hopefully we can hang out again uh and do do more cool like videos and stuff together. Sounds good, brother. Always a pleasure. All right. Hell yeah. Um, do you got any socials or anything you want to give, uh, put out there for the internets to know about? Yeah. Internets. If you're listening, I want to be your friend. Find me on Facebook or Instagram at James Balsamo. 
Uh, find me on Twitter at Acid Bath Product and uh, acidbathproductions.com. It's got all your needs. Or just type in James Balsamo at Walmart or bestbuy.com and my films will come up. So check them out. They're fun. They got boobs and monsters and shit. Hell and yeah. Mast intruders in them. So That's right. enjoy. Hell yeah. Awesome, bud. Uh, well, it's been a pleasure and uh, I will talk to you soon. Sounds good, brother. All right. Take it easy. All right. And that's it for the Intruder Green Podcast. I want to thank James again for being on it. You can hit me up on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram, all of Intruder Green. The Intruder Green call-in line is plus 1608-535-9608. Patreon.com slash Intruder Green if you want to become a producer of the show. Uh, the Intruder Green Podcast is produced by Colin Bennett, hair and makeup by Genevieve Smith, set design by Dylan Raymer, catering Matthew Hendershot, lighting, sweet lights, Rahway, New Jersey. Our theme song is Particles by Pipe Bros. Guys, wait up. I fell on my keys. Ow. <laughs> Shit. I just and here we, I am. We just Making lost all movies. of that. We just lost all of that. Can you say it again? I'm sorry. Sure. Sorry, I don't know why my connection is being shitty. I think it's because of the cause of the uh they're like uh making it everyone's internet slower because of the you know lockdown and all that stuff. Right. Yeah, so what I was saying was the meaning of life, but moving past that. Yeah, right. Um, you know, now I, we figured that out. <laughs>